In this video, we'll be talking about the three things that you need to know about group presentations. And number three is going to surprise you, but it's the most effective thing that you can do in any group presentation. What's up, guys? This is Philip Sessions, your public speaking and communication coach, here to talk to you today about your group presentation. This will help you get prepared for your next one and make you dominate against all of those other people that you're going up against. So number one, and this is one that is tricky, and for some reason, people really don't even think about, but when we think about group presentations, man, we just don't want to do it. I'd rather do it by myself. It's so much easier. I don't have to worry about if somebody else is going to go when I go or whatever. And you've probably had this situation before where you start to talk and then somebody else chimes in and it gets really awkward. Well, this first thing is going to help you with that explicitly. And that is to decide beforehand. And yes, this comes with preparation. You need to decide beforehand who will be speaking on what portions of the presentation. So let's say you have a technical presentation that you're going to go through. So you have the technical stuff, but then maybe you have some financial stuff. Maybe you have some safety stuff. There are different portions within all of this that you can then divvy out to different people to be able to talk about. So maybe one person talks about the engineering, one person talks about the financial impact that will be created from this or how much money it will take in order to create this product or service. And then what's the safety behind that? What are customers saying? The marketing things of that nature. There are different points that you can bring out within this presentation. And so you can then divvy that stuff up. So as you're going through that presentation and a certain part comes up or a certain slide, so maybe you don't have multiple different parts, each person can get an individual slide. And this really depends on the situation, but somebody can get an individual slide or they can talk about a particular topic. And so it may not be one slide for each person and maybe two for one person, one for another, one for another, whatever this could look like. But those are the ways that you can really divvy that up and doing so allows you all to seem to be in sync and no, not like in sync the band, but it just means that you are synchronized together and it looks more professional that way. Even though for you all, it will seem really awkward because each person has one slide for the audience, it doesn't feel that way. It feels very practiced and very professional because you all know what you're going to talk about and you can then feed off of each other or feed off the por person before that. And so perhaps maybe they missed something. Maybe there's something they missed. You can kind of emphasize what they said, perhaps, or you're emphasizing that point as well, that they said something you really liked, but you want to double down on that. You're able to do that versus if you're the only one speaking it's kind of hard to do that or if you're all trying to talk over each other. So number one is to decide beforehand who will be speaking on what portions of your presentation. Number two is avoid adding to someone else's answer. The worst thing that I have ever seen, and it is so awkward, and I actually experienced this myself. I'm not just saying it just because I'm trying to do a video here, but I experienced one time where it was a Q&A portion after a group presentation and every single time, I'm not kidding, maybe one time this didn't happen, but pretty much every single time, if not every single time, somebody would answer a question and then another person in the group would go in and add their two cents. And this is so frustrating, one, for the people on the stage, because well, why does this person keep answering a question after I've already answered it? And two, it doesn't make sense to the audience. It's it, And it really looks bad because it looks like you are being undermined. So if you're the person that just answered the question and your colleague then adds an extra two cents, well, now the audience doesn't know who to believe. Like, who's the expert here? Who's the one that really knows what they're talking about? Do any of them really know what they're talking about? Or is it just that this one person knows everything, and they've tried to give a bunch of information to everybody else, and everybody's just kind of regurgitating what they said. So by you adding in your two cents, it's really undermining those that you are actually doing that presentation with. So make sure that you don't do that, and make sure that your partners also don't do that on a presentation. 
And I will put a little caveat in here. This is not 100% never do this. The caveat there would be if somebody says something that is detrimentally wrong, you do need to go and correct that. Now, you need to be tactful when you go correct that. And that's definitely for another video for us to talk about how to do that. But if somebody answers a question and, and let's say, we'll just use solar, for example. So, oh, yeah, these solar panels, they never get hot. They convert 100 percent of the sun's energy into a battery. And, and so for those of you that know, uh, it's impossible for solar to do 100 percent conversion of all the energy that comes into that solar cell. One day, perhaps it will be possible. But if somebody says, oh, yeah, they convert 100 percent of the energy. At that point, you do need to let people know that's not, that's not the truth. And most people that are in the industry that are listening to your presentation will most likely know, although you're going to get some people that won't. I would correct that say, well, we found in certain situations or try and look at it in a different way or try and spin it a little bit to say, well, in, in certain situations, we do notice that we get 100% of the energy. But in most everyday situations, it's really about... 83% or or whatever. You you say the actual number there in that case or say an approximate number, but try not to put them down in this case, but also make sure that you are putting out that correct information. So there are times where you may go in and answer or maybe they just really gave nothing and maybe they looked at you and that's sometimes what you may do. Like if they look at you, then maybe you can go in and answer some more but I would tell anybody in your group that, hey, if you're not 100% sure, but this was your area and you want a little bit of additional input, you may say, hey, Philip, and then you ask them that question or you would say, what's your input on this? And you wouldn't say that exactly, but you want to make sure that you ask them for their thoughts on that at the same time to answer that. And, and you may just say like, hey, from my side, he, you know, I, I answered this portion, but hey, what about from the financial point? Can you can you finish up with the financial stuff? Like I talked about the engineering side, but from a financial perspective, Philip, what is what else is there? Like, can you answer that portion and kind of delegate that answer to them? This is a little tricky. It really depends on how complex the question was, but it is an opportunity for you to be able to hand off that question to somebody else and then not be such an awkward thing. But if there's no handoff, whether it's a verbal or a physical cue, then you need to just be quiet and let the person answer that question with the caveat that they didn't say anything detrimentally wrong. Even if they said something slightly wrong, most people won't know the difference. And if it's not crazy wrong, don't worry about it. They'll come back later and ask more questions or as you go from the sales presentation to the actual sale, you're going to go through all this information again anyways, so then you can correct it there. So don't think that everything needs to be 100% accurate, although you should strive for as much accuracy as possible. And then the third thing, I know you've been waiting for this, but this third thing is the one that most people don't think about. And it's speak to the company that you're speaking to in this case, not your company, but the company you're speaking to, their targets, not your product or services benefits over a competitor. Too often I see in sales presentations where somebody say, oh yeah, well, my product is so much better than XYZ company over here because of this, 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 and this. And they'll list out a bunch of things that makes their product better than the other one. And while that may be true, it doesn't put you in a positive light because now you're trying to put down a different company. And so rather than trying to put down a different company, and now this person or this company that you're speaking to trying to sell your product, now they're thinking about that company. Uh-huh. I wonder if that's true. And now they're not thinking about your company. So rather than talking about how great your product or service is and comparing it to a competitor, what you need to do is some research. I know that's a hard thing to do, but do some research on the company that you are pitching to, your product or service that is to, and see what their targets are as a company. Especially as the company gets larger, you'll probably start seeing some of these things or know based on industry standards that they're trying to do this. 
a big thing right now is going green. Well, hey, if your product is something that will help the company's green initiatives, that's something that you should bring up because most large companies are trying to be more green. And if your product helps out with that, bring that out because that's a selling point in and of itself. It may not seem like it for you or your company directly, and you may not actually really care about it. Your the person, your potential client does care about that. So if you can start painting a picture of what your product can do for them, not just from the product or the service that it will actually do this specific thing, but that it actually helps them meet their company targets too, that paints you in such a better light. It's the same thing when you go in for a relationship. If the girl or the guy that you're trying to get into a relationship can't see the benefit of having you around because guess what? They can do everything themselves. Why do they need you? Well, you got to show them why they need you. They don't need you. They don't have to have you. They want to have you in their lives. So show them why they should want to have you in their lives. Show that company why they should want to have your product because they're doing fine how they're doing now. But your product or service should be able to benefit them, not just from it does this thing or it gives you this thing, but it also helps in these other areas. And they can see this big picture vision of your product or your service helping their company. So we'll go for an example uh, with me helping you, perhaps. So I could go in and say, oh, yeah, speaking's great. It can really help you out. You should really get some speaking. Okay, cool. I get it. Speaking's good. It'll be helpful. But that's it. Like you're just gonna leave and then you're not gonna want to help. But I have to say, have you ever really struggled with getting in front of a group and feeling nervous or feeling underprepared? What if you actually had a coach to help you overcome those fears, to get that clarity on what it is that you're going to talk about and be able to get in front of a group and speak so well to them that they feel the confidence in you, and they believe in you immediately. I guarantee you're going to want more of my coaching because I painted a little bit of that picture for you with having that confidence and clarity in front of a group of people versus just saying that that speaking great. I brought you into that vision, into that picture of what my coaching can do for you. And so it's the same thing with your product or service. If you can paint a picture of what your product or service will do for this company or for this person, if you're not selling B2B or business to business, then you paint that picture for them or that company. And that's what helps them buy into wanting your product or service. So just to recap on the three things, number one, decide beforehand who's going to speak on what portion of the presentation. Number two, avoid adding to someone's answer at all costs because it's going to undermine them and it's going to make them look like they don't really know what they're doing. And therefore, your team is not going to look as strong as if one person answers a question and moves on to the next question in that Q&A round. And finally, number three is speak on the company's targets, not to your product or services benefits over a competitor. And if this video is helpful for you, please let me know in the comments below, like, subscribe, share this episode with those that need to hear this kind of message. And let me know once you implement this in your next group presentation so I can see how well it helped you out. And if you got any questions, feel free to reach out to me.